Hi everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to Print Zone 123. So in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about how to load a model in Takura, how to scale the model and then orient it properly on your build plate. So to get started we're going to click on Cura from the desktop. Alright, so this is again our home page screen. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to load the model. So to do that, there's two ways to do it. You can either go file and load a model, or the easier way is just to click on this icon right here that says load. So I have a folder saved with all my different STL files. So I'm going to go ahead and find the OK hand, and we're going to load that model. So when we load the model, we could see here that it appears on the build plate, and you can use the center um, scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Um, the other thing is if you right click you're able to rotate the model to see it at different angles and views which is another uh, very useful tool. So once this is fully loaded you're going to now see here in the top left corner it's going to give you um, some stats about your print and this is extremely extremely important and useful so the first thing it's going to give you is how long is it going to take for your model to print. Of course this is an estimate but I found that this estimate is pretty close to uh, what the print time will actually be. So this is saying that this print would take 5 hours and 36 minutes. So the next number it's going to give you is how many meters of filament that your printer is going to use to print the model. So in this case we're using 5.3 meters. and um, it's going to use a total of 42 grams. So again, your standard roll of filament is one kilogram, which is a thousand grams. So that gives you kind of a reference on how much of your roll of filament you're going to use. Now here's another interesting um, number here. So when you when you initially download Cura, this may or may not be there. What this is is a cost estimate in dollars on how much it's going to cost for you to print your part. So in this case, it's telling me that it's going to be 84 cents to print this part. So one way that you can go in and load these settings is if you go to Tool, uh, sorry, File, and then Preferences, this screen will pop up. So here, if you wanted to change, you see how the hand is in green, you could change it to any color you want. Um, but this is really what you want to take a look at, so where it says filament settings. So the typical density for filaments, yours may be different. You can, you can check for your specific filament, but the typical density is um, 1,240 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, here, just in a, as an example, I'm putting in $20. Um, this is, so how much is your roll of filament? So in dollars per kilogram. So again, I'm just going to use 20 as a, an example. And the other settings are pretty standard, so you can most likely just save those and hit OK. So one thing to point out is that this little black uh, triad right here, this is representing the front left corner of your printer. So for most printers, typically this is where your nozzle is going to start. And so um, that's just a way to orient yourself with the print bed. So now I'm going to talk about ways that you can scale your print and orient it. So let's say you wanted this hand to be printed a little bit smaller, right? So if you click on the model, you can then go to these buttons down here. So there's a rotate button, a scale button, and then a mirror button. So let's click on the scale button. And here you have all your options to scale it. So by default, they're set to scale together in both the X, Y, and Z direction. So if I come here and I change this from 1 and I go to 0 0.5, you see that the X, Y, and Z are all going to scale together and the model will now be half as big as it was. Um, if for whatever reason you want to scale one of the three dimensions individually, you can uh, basically just click on this lock right here and then you can change one dimension to scale and leave the other ones um, intact or whatever way you want to do that. So we're going to leave it as uh, scale one half. 
and if you click anywhere else on the screen um, you'll see you go back to the model um, coming back here and clicking on scale one other thing I guess I could point out would be up here are your dimensions so um, these are all in millimeters and it's your uh, width depth and height so you can see here that our height the model is 65 millimeters um, in English units I typically just punch that into Google and see what that is in inches and that'll give you uh, an accurate measurement of how large your uh, print's going to be. So if we come over here, click on the model, and we click rotate, you get these three uh, circles that'll come up around and they each represent a different um, dimension for your model. So if you take this red one here, you can spin it and rotate it at to some angle. So next to it, it'll tell you how many degrees you're rotating it. Um, and you can do that in any of the different directions. So let me just show you that. So that will help you, um, again, angle and orient your model onto the build plate. Um, this last tool, it's something that I don't really use that often. It's called the mirror. So you can flip it in the Z direction, the Y direction, or the X direction. Typically, I'll just rotate it um, to get it how I want it. So the next thing I'm going to go over is what this view mode is, what this button does up here. So this is an extremely useful um, tool. So when you click on it, the view you're in by default is just this normal view. But I'll go through what these other views are. So if you click on overhang, this is a pretty useful tool. So if we scroll to the bottom, anywhere that's highlighted red, is going to be an area that may be difficult to print. So in this case, the pointer finger underneath connecting to the thumb is highlighted red to show that there's some bridging that has to go on here in order for this to successfully print. So this is a tool that I found useful when scanning my model to see where the printer may have some difficulties. Um, transparent mode is going to kind of just make your model transparent. It's not the most useful in my opinion. And x-ray, same thing. Um, kind of looks cool, but it doesn't actually help you out that much. This last one is by far the most useful of the different view modes. So if you click on layer, this is, uh, you're going to see at the bottom, it'll say loading toolpath for visualization. So right here is a bar. And this 648 means that in our model it's going to print 648 layers in order to complete the model. So you can click on this bar and drag it down to any position or any layer in the model. So let's go to position one and we'll talk about it. So here you can see the print nozzle starts from the front left corner, it moves out to the center of the build plate, right, and then so this light blue line represents that it's going to first print a skirt around the model and then the red line shows the outer layer so if we find that on here that's going to be our outer shell speed right that's going to correspond to that and then the green line is our inner shell and the yellow is just it filling in the inside of the print so let's move up a little bit and you can see it kind of building it layer by layer. So again, this yellow now, we're seeing that this is our infill. And I'll talk about this more in a future video, but that's really related to our fill density. Um, and typically, I'll change it here just to show you, but typically a fill density of just 10 um, for most models and most needs is, is all you need. So um, anytime you make a change, it's gonna load this bar to show um, to update the model and then this visualization will update so that you can see what it's going to look like. So you can see the grid now is less coarse and uh, we have less infill on the inside of the model. So if we keep going up, 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 um, we'll kind of go to that tricky area that, you can, that we were talking about with the index finger and the thumb. So if we zoom in here um, you can see that in order for it to connect these two, it's kind of 
um, bridging this area, right? So there's nothing underneath it. It's kind of just the printer is going to slowly work its way outwards from the index finger and the thumb until they join. And so that's why this is a trickier area to print. Um, I guess one other thing to point out is all of these blue lines, what these represent are areas in which you're going to travel from one point of the model and it's going to quickly move over to a different point. So that's what those represent. And if we go back all the way up, we can see the print grow until we get to the very end. And at the last step, it's going to lift up from the print and move out of the way. So if we click up here, we can click on normal and it'll bring us back to the normal view. So one thing I forgot to mention before is when we scale this hand down um, by half, so remember before we were at over five hours of print time and now we're down to under an hour and a half and we're using a lot less filament, um, a lot less weight, and we were at over 80 cents for the print and now we're down to under 20 cents. So this is a useful tool when you want to see, again, your print time and a rough estimate on cost and how much material you're actually going to use. Alright, so that just about wraps it up for this video. Um, to check out some of my other Cura tutorial videos, make sure to check out my YouTube channel. Um, I talk about some of the basic printer settings that you're going to want to include for your printer, as well as the advanced tab and what some of these settings mean and how it will affect your print. Um, I also have some more advanced videos where I'll be talking about plugins, so what is the posit height plugin and how does that allow you to print um, multiple colors in a single print. So thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and have a good day.